Hello, my name is Victor and I'm going to be um, talking through the use of an app today called Pencil Project. Um, I'm on the portable app site right now. I just wanted to show this. If we go to apps and then you can see there are a bunch of apps on here. These are by and large open source. A couple of them are not. Um, I get a lot of applications from here. Um, they are set up so they don't actually change your computer. When you install them, they're self-contained. They don't change the registry or anything else. These are all for Windows. Um, and if we go down to graphics and pictures, we can see that here is Pencil Project Portable. Um, I've installed this, or you know, not installed, but you know, put it onto a drive so I can run it. Um, you can also just put it on your desktop and my documents anywhere else, but it doesn't make any system changes to your Windows install when you use these applications. So this is what the program looks like. Um, I've sort of cut out the generic Windows Chrome just so you can see it, um, get the most visual on the program that's possible. So there's this big white open space, and then over here there are all of these shapes um, or other UI elements rich text, plain text. Um, I'm going to scroll down because I tend to use, we can get some pretty high resolution widgets here. Um, I tend to use Sketchy GUI. Um, this is something I've seen in a few different mock-up programs. And this intentionally looks like it was drawn with a pencil. The reason I think this is useful is it reminds the user that they're just looking at mock-ups. Um, they're not looking, this isn't what you know, a program is going to look like because this um, pencil project is really designed to do quick user interface mockups to help communicate with a development team about, hey, here's what we have in mind. Um, the other way that this can be useful, depending on, you know, what sort of team members you have available for a project, is, you know, a designer or a product owner or maybe even the, des the developers. Um, once you deliver you know, your requirements, they could come in here and they could just very quickly slap together, hey, this is what we're envisioning. Show it to the people who use the program um, or, you know, whoever's delivering the functional requirements. If you're developing a product, it might not be the end user, but, you know, the person who's envisioning this product. And they can look at it and go, oh, that's not quite what I had in mind. Um, and if you have that back and forth with designs, it can go much more quickly and take much less... Um, man hours, but far fewer man hours, than if you actually develop the program and then demo it and then say, oh no, that's not what I meant. That isn't what was intended. It becomes a bug. The bug has to be fixed. And that's a lot more involved and takes far more time uh, than doing that with designs. So I'm just going to very quickly show how this works. Um, there are several different user elements. You just go over there and drag out so this is a box. I generally use this, you know, to create light boxes. Um, you can do lines, text fields, etc. So let's say we want to build a sidebar. There's going to be a really standard left sidebar. We can go down to table and drag a table in here. And then if we double click, we see that it uses basically wiki markup. Um, and so the vertical lines separate the columns and it it's kind of convenient because when you drag it out it shows you these codes you see an un an unchecked checkbox a checked checkbox and then um, an unchecked unchecked radio button and we can see that that's done with these codes um, the checked radio button is an asterisk into parentheses um, the checked checkbox is an asterisk into um, square brackets, and then the empty ones are the two square brackets of the two parentheses that are empty. So that's nice that that provides that. Um, we're going to go ahead and delete this down to one column. And I got into this edit view by double clicking um, and say we want to put some links. So at the top, maybe we don't have a link, we have, um, we'll just say that we're putting together. Um, a quick application, like a quick website mock-up, and we'll call it uh, the best website. And we'll say the first link is going to be the about page. Let's do about. The second link is, oh, sorry about that. 
That is, I am glad that happened though. If you press enter, it does um, kick out of this, much like Facebook. So I have to do shift enter to add a new line. Um, so I'm glad I made that mistake. Uh, we'll say the next link is going to be, um, we'll say it's for a web comic, uh, the web comic. And then we'll say the third one is artist bios. And then the last link we'll say is an FAQ. So then we come out of this and nothing lines up properly, but that's just because it tries to shove everything in and there are some limitations. So there will be a little bit of, of quirkiness like that. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of um, this program. So I'm gonna right click and we're gonna go down to properties. Header color, we want that header to be the same color as everything else. Um, header background and so now we can put this over here and say all right that's great that's what you know everything looks like that's that's what the sidebar looks like so then let's say we know the default page is going to have you know a comic in it we don't need to actually draw the comic because this is just a wireframe so we put that there and that takes the place of the comic um, if we want it to stand out, we can go to properties and make it like a, a blue color. And then it'll it'll jump out a little bit more. Um, we know we want there to be a, a title above the, that comic. So we can take label, and just drag it out there. Um, we know we want the label to be a little bit bigger. Let's say we want it to be in bold. Double click on this, just like we did before the best web comic all right so that's great um now here's an interesting thing just to show this tool we want everything aligned together so if i hit down control and click that these two things are selected together and then up here we have alignment and i can do align top and then whatever's arranged everything will align with whatever selected thing is highest so that's a, a very quick way to get alignments to work so then I'm just gonna move this up a bit with the arrow keys, up and down, left and right, only moves a little bit. If I do shift up and down, it moves quite a bit more. Um, to show just a couple additional features, um, we can drag a button in here. This is a web comic, so we'll say that's the random button. And then you can make that button a little smaller um, we want that to be aligned to the center with this. So I will select both of those things and do center alignment. Um, and then if I do control and paste, it will paste a second button exactly where that first button was, wherever I copied from. Um, sorry, copy and paste. So I'm gonna do that again. And then I can call this back and call this front. And now we more or less know that what our webcomic website is going to look like um, if we are not front. Let's call those next and last. Next and previous. You know, and that looks pretty good. And I'm a little worried about spacing, so we're gonna pull these in a little bit and maybe shrink them a touch. Because, mm, leave random a little wide because we know we want that to be the main one. I'm going to copy and paste again. then we can call this first comic, current comic, and so now we have an interesting thing going on. Nothing really looks all that well aligned. So pull that in a, a bit and do a control click on the box. I know it's not super obvious and do a line out. Pull that in a bit. 
control click with the box and align to that edge. Now I can choose all of these and instead of alignment there's this same sizes and spaces and I can choose equal spaces and then they all arrange themselves. So that was you know pretty easy to put together quickly. Um, we might want to title this page so I'll double click up there and call it main webcomic page. Click apply. Then I can come up here and right click and do new page. And then I can do an entirely new page and say um, it's the about page <clears throat> and click apply and that gives me a blank page. Not actually that useful. I'm going to go ahead and delete this because the other thing I can do is duplicate and that will duplicate the title as well. I know that I don't want this to be the main webcomic page. I can do the about page and click apply. I don't want all this stuff. I'll go through and delete that. Change that to about the best webcomic. And that will adjust that. And I've kept my sidebar, which is kind of nice. So now I can come over here and choose HTML texts. It's going to do sample text. And I can double click in here and it gives me a lot of formatting options. Oh, again, it's that same weirdness. I have to do shift enter to go to a new line. More info about, bolded info about. So let's bold that. Um, and if I want this to be a little larger, Ah, resizing happens in editable. I haven't used this tool quite as much. So then I can spread that out and build whatever I need. Um, these could be, these could also be treated as um, field headers. So then let's say we want to align left or align right, and then we're gonna align right to there and then we can pull in a text field if we wanted this to be more of a full interface. And elements will automatically align with each other like this. They'll sort of snap, which is convenient. Um, and so then from here, you can either do something like enter sample text. This is the more info. And you can put whatever would be in that field. So this can be used for a website mock-up like this or to mock up a whole web application. Um, it's, it's a very useful tool. Um, if you don't like the sketchy mock-up, they have um, far more refined looking widgets. Um, you can also go down and do flowchart work with this. I've done flowcharts, although not with this tool. Um, there are also defaults for you know, mobile, there are a lot of widgets in here. So you can make your screens look however you want. Or you can just go with some really common shapes and stylings that aren't intentionally sketchy. Um, I just personally tend to use um, the desktop sketchy GUI stuff the most. So this is really just a quick overview um, of what this application is capable of. Um, I've used it quite a bit. It's, it's helped accelerate some projects. Uh, and I hope you find this to be useful. Thanks.